Hey guys, so I hope your exam preparations have all been going well. So in this video, I just want to go through some couple of key points in regards to how to answer questions regarding the description of graphs, which they will definitely ask you in your paper for theory examination. So let's go through a couple of these questions and I'll go through how I would have answered them. So this question here is about the enzyme catalase that you find in lettuce leaves. They say that a student investigated the activity of the enzyme by grinding some lettuce leaves and adding them in a solution of hydrogen peroxide. The volume of oxygen produced was measured until the reaction stopped. And you can see that this was plotted on the graph where you've got the volume of oxygen collected on the y-axis uh, with time plotted on the x-axis. And so they ask you to basically describe the results shown in figure 1.3 and that you will gain credit if you use data in your answer. And so here I would have initially said that looking at the general pattern you do get the increase in the volume of glass, gas sorry, collected from one, 0 to 120 seconds. So the starting point of the graph is at 0 centimeters cubed collected and ends at 6 centimeters cubed collected over the period of 120 seconds. Now you can see that there is a fairly initial in, a rapid increase of volume, uh, volume collected from 0 to 40 seconds. So this region here up until the 40 second mark where you can see that it's around 5.4 centimeters cubed collected that's when there's the most rapid change from 0 to 5.4 but then you start to see that things start to slow down a little bit and that's what you would have mentioned in your answer and then it reaches this period where the graph plateaus out and that's what you would have said that between 80 to 120 seconds uh, the volume of oxygen collected remains at around 6 centimeters cubed uh, suggesting that uh, the, the graph has plateaued. So you can separate the graph into three segments, the initial rapid increase, the slowing down phase, and the plateau, and obviously support your claims with the appropriate data uh, from the actual graph. So those are three very easy marks. Uh, let's just take a look at another question. If we go all the way down to page 40, we've got another graph here. Uh, they say that uh, the enzymes in bean seeds are activated during germination. Some of these enzymes break down proteins stored in seeds. A large number of these bean seeds were soaked and germinated. Researchers took samples of germinating seeds over a period of 15 days. And so the seeds were chopped into small pieces and crushed with water to make an extract. Equal quantities of the extracts were placed in the protein solutions of pH 5 and pH 8. The activity of the enzymes in each extract was determined by recording how quickly the protein was broken down. And here are the results in figure 3.3. So here the y-axis is the enzyme activity in arbitrary units and also the x-axis being the time or the days. So they ask you to describe the activity of the enzymes in extract at pH 5. So we can ignore pH 8. This is what we're concerned about. And so let's separate this graph into its different components, right? You can see in this region here, there's a very sort of uh, mild or little activity. Whereas from this point to this point, you start to get a fairly rapid increase. And from this point to this point down here, you get a moderate decrease. So we've got three different parts of the graph that we can describe. So that's what we'll do. You can start to say that from 0 to 5 days, there is fairly little activity. And that the activity starts to increase fairly rapidly from day 5 to around day 11, which is the second part of the graph there. And you should have told them as well that the increase is from around 2 units to around 37 units. And that 37 unit mark is also the peak of the graph as well. So if you have this sort of graph where it obviously goes up and starts going down again, it's quite important or it, it would be nice to tell the examiners that you know that the graph peaks at a certain point, which is at day 11 at, at 37 units in this particular graph. And then you can head on to say that from day 11 to around day 14 or 15 in this third section of the graph, 
here that there is a decline and again you have to quote the data the decline is from 37 units to around 14 units uh, that we see on the graph and again we don't have to explain anything we just need to tell them what's going on and again it's really helpful to take a look at the overall picture of the graph and separate the graph into its different components and I always start from the beginning uh, and sort of tell or write in my answers as to what is going on and so if we take a look at another question on page 96 I believe here we go. Um, a group of students used a heart monitor to record the pulse rate of an athlete during 5,000 meter race. The recording started just before the race began and ended just after, just after it had finished, uh, as shown in Figure 1.2. So once again, they ask you to use the data from Figure 1.2 to describe the effect of exercise on pulse rate of the athlete. And so, if we were to again take a look at the overall graph. We can see that there is a very rapid increase, because this is where the race starts, in pulse rate over this period. That's the first part of the graph. Then you see this second part here, where the heart rate or the pulse rate remains constant. Okay, It starts to go down again, but that's irrelevant because the end of the race is sort of at this point here. So there's two main parts to this graph that you can describe. The idea that initially it, it goes up really rapidly and then it stays constant. So uh, what we would have said here is that there is a rapid pulse rate increase from around 44 beats per minute to around 168 beats per minute. And that happens over the 2 minute to 4 minute mark. And you could have also said that, again, the peak of the graph sits at 168 beats per minute, and that occurs at the four minute mark, and it stays constant at around 168 beats per minute for the duration of the four to 14 minutes. Um, so that's what I would have said, and that's what was required to get an easy three marks in that question. And we're gonna go through one final question on page 109 which is about HIV. So HIV invades specific lymphocytes that coordinate immune responses. Figure 5.1 shows the change in numbers of these lymphocytes following an HIV infection that has not been treated. So here we've got the lymphocyte number sitting at the y-axis and again the time in years in the x-axis. So let's once again separate the graph into its different components. We get that steep decline in this first period. Then you get this slight increase in the second period. Okay, so maybe I should do that in a different color. Um, this is the second period. And you get that gradual decline in the third period of the graph. Okay, and all we're going to do is describe each of these with the relevant quotes from the graph. So there's a steep decrease in the first two months, okay, from 1,000 cells per millimeters cubed to around 500 cells per millimeters cubed, and that happens over the period of two months. And then you can say that there is a increase from that 500 centimeters, uh, sorry, 500 cells per millimeter square mark to around 650 to 670 cells per millimeters cubed. And then that there is a gradual decline during the 10 year duration to an end point of around 40 cells per millimeters cubed. Okay, and that was all you needed to say for the three marks. So as you can see, all you need to do is once again separate the graph that you're looking at into its separate components uh, and just basically describe it with the quotations from the graph and that will give you very, very easy marks for your examination. So I hope that helped you guys and I will see you in the next video.